Welcome. I'm Caroline Cronson, producer of Works and Process, the performing arts program at the Guggenheim. We're thrilled to host Insights with choreographer Leo Sandoval as he discusses our first viewing of his WPA virtual commission with Pamela Tachi, executive and artistic director of Jacob's Pillow. We created WPA virtual commissions as a direct response to the current pandemic to support artists financially and creatively during these challenging times. So we're gonna start by showing all you gotta do is ask, co-presented by CUNY Dance Initiative, Jacob's Pillow, and Cat's Barn Culture Park for Dance. Then open to a discussion with Leo and Pamela. We'll wrap up by 7.30 after another and informed showing of All You Got To Do Is Ask. You'll be able to access these and our other commissions on our social media channels accessed through www.worksandprocess.org. So thank you for tuning in and enjoy.
Hey, Leo. <risos> Hi, Pam. Nice to see you. Tudo bem? Tudo jóia, tudo jóia com você. <risos> tudo bem, obrigada. It's so good to see you. And um, I just have to say, we, we go back a long way. And I, I want to, uh, first of all, say welcome to everyone who's joined us tonight. What a joy to see this beautiful uh, new work of art. And uh, there's, I uh, want to just shout out Guggenheim Works in Process, all they've done to support artists and creativity at this time. And I know that weekly we look forward to these moments of inspiration to seeing what, what is happening that is uh, so beautiful and so full of possibility. So Leo, thank you so much for uh, putting us in that zone again tonight. Um, mm -hmm. I have to just say, um, as the, the director at Jacob's Pillow, we have a long history with you, and I want to just tell people a little bit about it. So uh, you came to this country in um, 2013, right? Yeah. To Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, you submitted an audition tape. Uh, you danced in your apartment in Baltimore, and you sent that audition tape to the TAP program at Jacob's Pillow, led by Michelle Dorrance. Exactly. And the rest, as they say, is history. So um, <laughs> it was 2014 that you came to the TAP program, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and then was... tell, tell the story of how you, you ended up in the Dorrance company. What, how did that happen? Um, throughout my, my, my uh, school time at the school at Jacob's Pillow, Michelle was actually as well uh, setting a new piece, a new choreography, for her to premiere at the Jacobs Pillow. And because of our connection in the in the in the process of like learning from her at the school, she invited me to join first the show and consequence as consequence uh, I, I joined the company. And I've been dancing with her since since then. Uh, but also the pillow has uh, true you and true true uh, the pillow through you has also supported my company so much. Uh, uh, I remember the first year that we went to work with the pillow was your actually first year as well. So uh, I thank you for all your support, not just throughout Dorrance Dance, but also throughout my company too as well. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. It's been a joy to grow up with you at Jacob's Pillow. And uh, <laughs> and let me just tell you that it's every dancer's dream to to have the the faculty, the program director, ask them to join their company. So um, Leo, you're an astonishing dancer, but I wanna just talk a little bit about Music From The Soul, which you founded uh, five years ago as a tap dance and live music company that blurs the line between concert dance and music performance. And I think this commission is so, uh, this is so in evidence in this piece. So um, tell us a little bit about how you and Gregory Richardson, I should say that Gregory Richardson is your uh, music director, also the co-music director of Dorrance Dance. You yeah. two met through Dorrance Dance. And uh, he's just a, a genius of a creator uh, musician. And tell, tell us a little bit about when you got the call from the Guggenheim, how you decided what you wanted to make. Um, actually, so I will first just start saying that goes without saying that uh, every single work that I do, uh, and especially this video right now, is an entire collaboration between me and everybody. Uh, we are being presented, presenting this video as my commission, as Leonardo individual commission, but I, this is just like the way that we are presenting. Uh, it's extremely uh, collaborative. Collab I, I don't know why I'm missing this word, but it's a collaboration between me, Greg, the dancers, and also editors and other things. So I'm extremely thankful and humble to be in front of this work and like leading leading this this work. But um, when I when I heard from Duke that I I, I had this commission. Um, I was going through uh, a little bit of frustration because uh, it was uh, a couple of weeks, weeks after um, George Floyd's uh, video uh, came to public. Uh, the protests were already happening and um, they, some of the protests were getting a little violent. And, but even the ones that were not violent, uh, police were still arresting people. Uh, and as much as I would love to be a part of all the protests that were happening at that sparkling moment, um, I was really afraid for my legal situation in, in the country. Because if I if I get arrested, even by just being in a protest, not being violent or anything, uh, that jeopardizes my my legal status here pretty much 
as Dio. So I, I, was, I was in a lack of physical voice. I wanted to go to the streets, but I couldn't do it. So uh, when I got the commission, the first thing I, I, uh, it came to my mind was like, I want to make a comment, a comment on racial. Uh, I don't want it to be super obvious. I just want to express the frustration I'm, I'm feeling right now. Uh, and after that, it was a bunch of conversations with my husband inside of home, like thinking about it with Greg, extremely, extremely, extremely talking through it. And especially with the other dancers too, as well. And tell us about the dancers. Uh, where are they? Uh, where in the country or the world are they based, your dancers? Uh, so Gisele Silva uh, is based in LA. She's Brazilian, but based in LA. Uh, Lucas Santana, he is Brazilian, but he's based in Florianópolis in, okay. in, in Brazil. And Roxy King uh, is American and based in DC. No, she's based in Virginia, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, I think what I really appreciated was um, at the start, uh, sort of the interplay between the dance and the close-ups where we got to begin to know these dancers a bit, whether it was the, the touching of the hair or the wiping of the face. Um, and tell us a little bit about how uh, it, so much happens in these commissions in the editing. Uh, you are listed as a co-editor with another person. How, how did you think about uh, the the whole arc of the film uh, in terms of the editing. Uh, yeah, the editing happened uh, between me and my husband, uh, Noah Kane, who is also a, a member of the company. He's a pianist on my company and also is a huge help in the administrative way. Uh, mm -hmm. But in this particular, particular work, he was like editing the work with me. So we both were sitting down and trying to edit the video version of it. Um, Greg, in the other hand was working not only with the composition, but also editing all the sounds that you hear in, in the sound. Um, because, you know, we are everybody in a, in a different place and I wanted everything to be very co cohesive. Like, uh, mm -hmm. and I thought that the sound would be, had to be super sharp and Greg took hours and hours and hours working on that. But on, on the editing, on the video editing, uh, took a lot of conversation for us to actually draw out a storyboard before we decide to send the dancers a list of shooting and everything we want them to actually film. So uh, when I say it was a lot of conversation, it was really, really a lot of conversation, a lot and of drawing and, and, and that's how we basically figured out like the structure of, mm -hmm. of the piece. And to vision this in the abstract and then make it real with dancers in all different parts of the world, that's, that's really an accomplishment. And, and what about you as a musician, Leo? I mean, you play those coins <laughs> so expertly. Tell us a little bit about, um, did you grow up uh, doing both dance and music interchangeably in your, in your life? Um, I actually, my father is a drummer, uh, so I had music inside of my house very constantly uh, by just like being playing, being around, seeing him playing. But I was never a f musician that gets the instrument and play. It was more natural in this other direction. And actually took me a while. I started dancing as a kid and took me a while to realize that tap dance was intricate. It was music based, mm -hmm. sometimes much more than, than the visual. And, and I, I, I am a little bit frustrated that I actually didn't pick up an instrument as a younger person. But working with Greg, for example, he's so sensible and he's really, really smart. And like everything, every single musical idea that I even imagine, he's very, very good at actually taking it out of my brain and making it into a piece and also everything that he does um, on, on his creative side too, is thinking on, on the music that the taps are already making it. So it's, 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 it's really, I, I don't even know what comes first in our work. Yes. If it's music or if it's dance, it's, it's very organic. Right. And uh, what, it, what are some of the opportunities and challenges of making work uh, on video uh, on zoom uh, as opposed to in person what are what is are there some silver linings that you found about this experience that you can tell us about and some Definitely. challenges 
Uh huh. No, definitely. Uh, first, the frustration of not seeing the work uh, in any rehearsal. Like we only see the work when we actually finish the editing. Uh, so that that was a big frustration. Um, but we also picked up so much. Like uh, we, I learned so much about video editing, recording editing, uh, and and that's a plus. Uh, especially in a world like this right now where everything is based on video communication and uh, video performances, like recorded performances. Uh, so this was a huge skill that I'm very thankful from getting it. It's, it's very hard to be creative and learn a new skill as you're trying to make a work come out. But I, I'm proud of what, what we, we, we managed to make. Wonderful. And, and so much of the, um, the uh, how tap gets made is through improvisation. Uh, what was the place of improvisation in this uh, process? Did you have individual rehearsals with dancers? What, what, um, what did the dancers bring to this, uh, this piece? Uh, I had the conversations with them were really individual. And um, I basically send every single video of the steps that I want them to make, that, that I want them to learn through video. So there wasn't a Zoom uh, class or a Zoom lesson. I thought it would mm -hmm. be easier to, to pass on the material uh, for them to learn as a video. And because I'm not in the room with them, things that I think will work for their bodies or for, for what, what I'm envisioning, it actually doesn't work for the space that they are having and everything else. Uh, so that it's where their pers personality comes very handy because we had to adapt so many things, like so many things in the chair dance and the door dance because there was a step. So uh, I didn't use improvisation, tap improvisation in the video, even though I asked them to film a couple bars of them improvising. Uh, but we had <laughs> so much material that we had to contain and like, contained to that, uh, but I feel like their personality uh, and their contribution artistically is, is in how we, we manage the thing to work, like the jeitinho brasileiro, like the yes. Brazilian way, oh, we little thing. This way yeah. but we'll do that way, yes. And I, I think what you see is the momentum that, that builds in the piece. So from those sort of more somber, self-conscious gestures, there, there comes some smiles, there comes the, the sort of building of that music score. Um, and uh, I'm interested to know uh, sort of uh, what was, what's underneath all of that for you as you watch it? What, what do you feel uh, in, in looking at the work? Uh, musically and sonically, I, I especially the tap music of it. Um, it's, it reminds me a lot of Brazilian rhythm, but from a specific part of Brazil, which is Salvador, uh, and, and which has a very deep history with slavery and, and black community. So that's why I picked that. And that's, that's the feeling that I, I always have when I listen to the music of the work. But the visual always get me a little, frustrated and, and I don't know, make, makes me think. I, just like you said, there's like moments of smiling, but that smiling is kind of defining and- Yes. And yeah, yeah, I guess that's as far as I wanna go. I like yeah. to leave it yeah. open for, also right. for everyone to, to have their own interpretation because uh, you know, it will, make, it will make the piece a little more personal for every single audience member or every single viewer. Absolutely. And what, what you get the sense of is the isolation, the repetition, and then the community, which is, is so you see a sense of real resiliency. So that's, that's wonderful. Wow. So tell me a little bit about um, you and, uh, and what, what are you up to right now? What is music from the soul working on? Uh, we, we've been very busy. We just got back from, from Cat's Band this morning we had we closed the festival over there and we actually had three occasions over there uh, we are war working on a releasing of our first album actually uh, we have one song already out uh, called samba do sol and it's on spotify uh, apple music and all all the platforms so other songs are coming throughout the year um, 
we have a couple re dance residencies that we got for this year. But because of COVID, we are kind of jiggling the dates and figuring out when when it will actually culminate. But there's a lot of online opportunities happening for us. Uh, opportunities with the Lincoln Center, opportunities with Guggenheim. There's a whole um, serious uh, isolation for creation uh, based on our time at Cat's Band also coming out and a video from Lincoln Center going, uh, coming, coming out too as well. So I would say just try to, if you wanna find out a little bit more, try to follow us in the social yes. media. Yes, there's a lot of things coming up. And your song is on your website too. I noticed that you're, you're, yeah. you're, so people can listen. And, and so tell us, you know, we, we know how uh, artists have been really uh, challenged and, and many, many things have just stopped for artists in our country right now. What do you think that artists need the most from, uh, from individuals, from organizations? Uh, what can people do to support artists right now? Uh, I, I, the first thing I think it's on, on my community in the sense of the immigrant artists. There's a lot of, of, of issues with us getting resources for work uh, and true, true legal systems uh, like unemployment and things like this. So uh, we, we are not earning money, but we can also as well look for government help um, as easily. Uh, so I would say opportunities for work and creation in a sense of, in this virtual sense. Uh, I, I am very, very, very fortunate to have three times at Cat's Band this summer, have this video commission and a couple of other works, but uh, I know I am one in, in lots. I, I can't even put in a in number. So I don't wanna I don't wanna be the person who is just taken as a token, you know. Oh, you see, there is an artist and he's working and he's dancing throughout this process. Uh, I am one case, and there's so many, many, many other performers looking for space, safe space to work, safe space to create. And honestly, it's a combination of creativity because we we've been contained for so, such a long time that it will, if, if this space is given to them, only wonderful work will come out of it, that's for sure. Yes, and these, these commissions are so precious and uh, these residencies as well. And I just, um, I, I wish you all the best, Leo. You have, you have so much love coming at you from your pillow family, uh, you. from the, the patrons of the Guggenheim Works in Process. And uh, I, I'm excited that we get to see this uh, video one more time. Did you have one more thing to say, Leo? Yes, yes. Uh, I just thought of other thing that I actually think that we need. Uh, and that's the very simple thing. It's just to everybody to fill out the census. And this is a other, a, another point that we will help uh, my community of immigrants as well a lot because we don't have a voice on voting or, or um, other things. And the census drive federal money to the places that we are in our case in New York. And so if you are in New York and you care about nurturing um, resources for your community, do it for New York, do it for your city. It's, it's really important. Fantastic, that's great. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Leo. Great to be with you and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you. And thank, thank you everyone for being with us tonight. Thank you, thank you everyone, bye-bye. Okay, ciao, ciao, bye.